think we should be, as long as everybody's seated, I think we should be able to get to the baptismal font pretty easily. I think we should. Yeah. Is it during the service or is it after? No, it's during. Okay. A wonderful good morning, everyone, and welcome to our little piece of heaven here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in beautiful Hillsboro, Illinois. And thank you for worshiping with us today. Our hearts and our doors are wide open. Today, Jesus will open our minds about the kingdom of heaven in today's gospel and my message. But we'll also see the openness of God's heart in two baptisms today. Is that right, Jackson and Olivia? That's right, at your baptism over there, later in the service, uh, you will hear the promise of God's forever love. And of course, I invite everyone to be reminded that it's God's love for you as well. And then we leave from this place to share the good news with open doors, to go beyond our church and meet people, love them, and invite them to meet Jesus. But before we begin today's service, celebrating the kingdom of God, having come near, I'm going to invite everyone, except Cassie here, to sing a happy birthday song because it is our, our organist's birthday today. So please, would you join me? Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Cassie. Happy birthday to you. Many blessings. I did warn her so she knew it was coming. Please join me in our invocation today, which we will read um, based on Psalm 105, taking turns, your part is to bold print. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon God's name. 
Make known the deeds of the Lord among the peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing praises, and speak of all God's marvelous works. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Faith for the strength of the Lord, continually seek God's face. Remember the marvels God has done, the wonders and the judgments of God's mouth. O offspring of Abraham, God's servant, O children of Jacob, God's chosen ones. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Our opening gathering hymn of praise is Now Thy Gates of Beauty, number 250 in the Green Worship Book. Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, it is children's time, and I invite any and all young ones to come up if you want to join my friend Sammy the Lamb here and have a seat up front with us, I'll share a message with you. Oh, there's your candy, Sammy. We brought something special to show and tell today. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to see you. Two of you will be baptized today to welcome you into the kingdom of heaven. 
and the family of God, some of which is represented here in our church, and to eternal life. Well, Sammy, hello kids, and I brought this little packet here today, and I don't know if anybody can read what it says there. What is this? Can you tell? What does it say there among all the advertising on the very bottom, above my finger? Yeast. Does anybody know what yeast is? Trying to open it up. Oh, well, that worked very well. There we go. Well, I just spilled some of it. All right, we're going to make a little mess here. So what does that look like? You see? It's some kind of a like grainy, powdery substance. Does anyone know what we do with yeast? I'm going to give you a hint. Shall I say me? It's used in baking. You mix it with other stuff. What do you use for baking? Some yeast? What about flour? Water? Maybe some eggs, sugar, water. Did I mention water? We're going to have water today. Yeah. But without this little powdery substance that's called yeast, your bread or your pastries would be really tough and hard. It wouldn't get all nice and fluffy and soft and tasty. Mm. Yeah, so the yeast is getting mixed in. And in our Bible reading today, from the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is comparing different things to say, well, let's imagine, what is the kingdom of heaven really like? Because oftentimes we cannot really see it. And we think heaven is far away. But Jesus says, well, imagine heaven, the kingdom of God being like yeast that gets mixed in flour. And what happens is it makes the flour rise, bubbling all up with some of the water, perhaps. And then you get this big blob of dough and you can make lots of bread rolls out of it or a big, big cake for like a hundred people. So Jesus is telling us that the kingdom of God is powerful and it continues to grow and spread and you know, it provides joy and nourishment and good things for all people. So now imagine, what if you and I are like that yeast? God gives us some love, and we share it with each other, and with a few other people, like maybe we feed hungry people in our community, or you show some kindness to somebody and give them a hug, or you can help someone out with schoolwork, or do some other kind of act, act of kindness and pick up some trash. All kinds of things that we can do that are nice keep spreading God's kingdom of love. So Jesus encourages us to remember that while we might not be able to see the kingdom of heaven, people can see your love and you can help spread the kingdom of heaven. Just like yeast that we put into this little bowl of candy now so that I can pray with you. Shall we pray? Well, dear gracious and loving God, we thank you that you have brought the kingdom of heaven to us when Jesus showed us your love, when he healed people or forgave their sins, when he just accepted them as they are, and when he showed all of us that you can save us from even death and give us eternal life. So we thank you for that joy and hope and faith and love and help us, dear Jesus, to share that love with many other people, like yeast in flour, kind of making dough out of our whole world, that everybody is filled with it and satisfied and happy. We thank you in Jesus' name and ask that you help us to spread your love. And Sammy and all God's children say aloud, Amen. Oh, that was like an echo there. I did teach a congregation last week to say a really loud amen if they really mean it. So one, two, three, really loud. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. That's right. So.
Here's two pieces of candy for each of you. One to remind you that God loves you. The second one to spread like yeast. Eat the leaven in the dough of our church or your community and spread God's love. Thanks so much for coming up for children's time. The first reading is from the eighth chapter of Paul's letter to the church in Rome. In the way the Spirit comes to, our, to help our weakness, we don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. The one who searches hearts knows how the Spirit thinks, because he pleads for the saints, consistent with God's will. We know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. We know this because God knew them in advance, and he decided in advance that they would be conformed to the image of his son. That way, his son would be the first of many brothers and sisters. Those who God decided in advance would be conformed to his son, he also called. Those whom he called, he also made righteous. Those whom, whom, whom he made righteous, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and planted in his field. It's the smallest of seeds, but when it is grown, it is the largest of all vegetable plants. It becomes a tree so that the birds in the sky come and nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through all the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that somebody hid in a field which someone else found and covered up. Full of joy, the finder sold everything and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he found one very precious pearl, he went and sold all that he owned and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that people threw into the lake and gathered all kinds of fish. When it was full, they pulled it to the shore, where they sat down and put the good fish together into containers. But the bad fish, they threw away. That's the way it will be at the end of the present age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mom! Dad! I've got a question for you. What's heaven like? 
Ah, let's see. What's heaven like? Well, son, let me think about that. Yes, heaven's like... Um, let me find the right words. Heaven's like... I've got an idea. Why don't you go and ask the pastor? So, what is heaven like? Well, I know I am the pastor. And I'm glad you're asking. But today, we're going to look at Jesus' answer to the question. In fact, as it so happens, Jesus told them a parable. And then another. And then another. And then some more. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like... Here it comes. A mustard seed. Leaven in a badge of dough. Treasure in a field. A priceless pearl. A net bulging with lots of fish. The Bible talks about heaven in many different ways, in many different places. But I'm sure we all know. Many of the times, it does not give us really a lot of details. And any of the specifics that we get kind of resemble like those free-flowing poetic imaginations more than anything else. Is heaven like where people in white choir robes are lolling around on cottony clouds, plucking on harps? That's the iconic image that we get from newspaper cartoons, right? But it's actually based, at least in part, on glimpses that we get in the visions of the book of Revelation from John. Kind of like all thrown together at random. But maybe heaven is like a gleaming celestial city where streets are paved in gold. Yeah, that comes from Re Revelation too. Or then we can look at other passages like the prophet Isaiah, who seems to think that heaven is kind of like a big banquet table, groaning with food and wine, a sumptuous feast spread out on a mountaintop. Is that it? Scripture really does not give us an exact image of what heaven is like. It's like they give us all these like comparisons. It's if the prophet Isaiah or St. John or the Apostle Paul offer us some, some kind of a vision, a revelation. It's more like a dream. Speaking of dreams, Patricia Bulkley is a hospice chaplain who has heard many a patient over the years tell her about vivid dreams that they experience during the last days of their lives. Patricia has collected some of these dream stories and analyzed them together with her son, Kelly, who happens to be a psychologist, in their book called Dreaming Beyond Death. In one of the chapters, a female cancer patient who was struggling with doubts about the existence of God shared that she dreamed for three nights in a row about an image, the collection of huge boulders, giant rocks that seem to be pulsating with an eerie blue light. As the patient reflected on the meaning of this strange image, she says she knew intuitively that the boulders were symbols of some divine being who was very real. And she said, I don't know, I, I don't need to know anything more than that. God is God. And then, the night before she died, the woman had a final dream. It began the same way as the others had begun. But then, the boulders morphed into stepping stones. Remember a story we heard recently in one of our Old Testament readings? In the distance, this woman could see a golden light. It's calling me now, and I want to go. 
she told the chaplain. And she died the next day. The Bulkleys in their book make the point that such dreams don't really prove that heaven exists. But they say that these dreams are signs for a reality that goes beyond our mortal, earthly, human experience. And in a similar way, Jesus' parables don't exactly explain what heaven is. But they poetically suggest, like dreams, what God's eternal reign, God's presence in heaven and on earth, might be like. For Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is not so much a spiritual reality beyond this world, as it is the real divine rule of God that is breaking into our world. At the beginning of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus began his ministry by declaring this announcement, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 3, 12, uh, chapter, um, verse 2. So, chapter 3, verse 2. And then Jesus' mission is to wake people up, like John the Baptist had prepared people through baptism to get them ready for the chosen messenger from God that would bring the kingdom, the reign, the rule of God to the world, to all people. That's why Jesus compares the kingdom of God, God's heavenly rule, to things that show us God's nearness, God's presence among us uh, in a way that oftentimes we may not recognize it unless we really look, and in ways that we oftentimes can't even imagine. So like a mustard seed that grows into a huge tree. It's actually uh, a weed shrub. People wouldn't normally <laughs> sow that into their fields. But it's like Jesus saying, look, the kingdom of heaven is like a bunch of dandelions that someone purposely put in their front lawn. It's because the seed of heaven may be teeny tiny, you know, like the seed of your dandelion that blows all over in the springtime. But once they take root, I'm sure anyone here who has a lawn knows this, it's, it's almost impossible to stop them. That's the point Jesus is trying to make here. Once God's presence takes root in our hearts, it can't be stopped anymore. Or the influence of heaven is slowly growing in our world just as a yeasty loaf of bread expands in the oven and gets bigger and softer and crunchier and tastier. It starts, however, with a teeny tiny insignificant pinch of yeast. And then look at the result. The inbreaking reality of God's rule has the power to transform our lives, our community, the entire world. Where it's like a treasure field, you know, where someone was doing some plowing for somebody else, and then all of a sudden they come across this buried pot of Roman coins that maybe some soldier left behind, and he's covering it up. He sells everything he owns and it goes to the person who owns the field he's like would you mind selling me your field you know i've been working there it's kind of nice i would like to own it myself i'll make a good price for it and he waits with a kind of like anticipation it's like please please let him say yes and then the guy says well you know that's been my father's well i make a really good offer okay because it's you and can you just imagine inside going like, yes, I love the treasure. It's like that kind of joy when we find the kingdom of God, God's presence, God's love for us, God's forgiveness that's free. And we'd give anything to keep it.
That's how Jesus is. The kingdom of heaven is like, or priceless pearls, kind of the same illustration. But then Jesus gets to the final parable in this section of Matthew, and then Jesus surprises us. He says, "The kingdom of heaven is like a net catching all kinds of fish." But guess what? We are not the ones who are casting the net. You and I, we are the fish, and we're being caught up by God's kingdom. Some of us good, some others bad. And I bet you, we will want to be among those who are the keepers, not the ones being thrown out. So, what is the kingdom of heaven like? A mustard seed, a leaven in a batch of dough, treasure hidden in a field, or a priceless pearl, a net bulging with fish, where God gathers everyone, good or bad. Jesus is not giving us a theological treatise like we were made to read in in seminary, and then my head was hurting. No, Jesus simply offers us hints, little suggestions, and perhaps like good illustrations that might be the best Jesus or anybody can offer us. It isn't those dreams, visions, or parables that we discern perhaps the deepest and most profound truths that pertain to this life, but even more so the life that is yet to come in God's heavenly realm. But heaven, we have to admit to kids, ourselves, and anybody, is a mystery. And the best we can do with our limited, small human minds is to simply trust that one day everything will be clear. Here's some good news I have to share with you today. That is, we can use the parables of Jesus as a way to help us see the value, the power, the very presence of God's eternal heavenly rule here among us. In our earthly lives, that's the promise that all of us receive in the sacrament of baptism, like Olivia and Jackson are being promised today. Yes, God is with you in your lives, and I invite you to look for God's presence and God's love everywhere, and then to keep spreading it, because Jesus says to all of us, God's heavenly rule of this. Kingdom that I'm bringing grows like a mustard seed. It is powerful, like a pinch of yeast. It's a treasure that fills anyone with joy who finds it. But Jesus says to you, go, search for God's kingdom of heaven, and give your all for it. And then when it catches you, like a net, it's like. You are in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And thank you all for this morning's offering, which will pay for my spiritual retreat this coming week on a Caribbean cruise. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I was just trying to see if you were paying attention. Well, I will be on a retreat this coming week, but I don't know who cruise. I will be here late for a while. If you want to know, but your offerings do support all the very many ways that our congregation is sharing God's love. Um, we are providing for outdoor ministries where kids are learning、um, about God's love, perhaps for the first time. Um, but also, we are supporting ministries like Lutheran World Relief, the ministry of our month today. And darn it, I forgot to ask the kids to collect the special offering. So we're going to do this at the end of the service, I think. You know, after the benediction and the last hymn, I got two buckets up here, and I'm going to get some of you to volunteer. I hope you will. Maybe take some baptismal sponsors with you and help you learn how to collect offerings. 
and stand in the back and we'll empty our pockets so that we can make sure that quilts like from St. Paul's uh, or um, I wanted to say survival kits, the health kits and school kits being delivered to places like um, Ukraine, um, Sudan, and you name it, South America. There's actually a poster in the hallway that shows some of the wonderful things that we are doing um, with the help of Lutheran World Relief. And then I wanted to briefly also say thank you to a number of people who have been working during our church work week. Um, you see there's some craft materials still left in the back on that table there. Uh, we are having doors being painted in 100 degree weather. The library is being organized. Some of it is taking longer, but thanks for everyone who's giving their time. Uh, we had someone who placed the organ, actually vacuumed the organ, and so a lot of stuff is getting done. So thank you. And there's still some projects if you want to join in. But let's collect our offering this morning for our financial gifts as we sing our hymn of the day, Shine, Jesus, Shine. That's in the blue book, number 651. of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need 
and all of creation. Almighty God, we pray for the church and all servants of the gospel, like the Apostle Paul. Encourage all believers to declare that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Today, we pray for a blessing upon Pastor Zach Crampion, who will be ordained this afternoon, and then begin his ministry in his first call at Zion in Mount Olive and Zion in Gillespie. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we pray for the well-being of creation. Preserve the mighty tree as well as the tiny mustard seed. Help us make a difference as advocates for environmental practices. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, we pray for the nations. Instill in all who govern the ability to discern between good and evil. Free those who are oppressed and protect any who are facing danger. Promote peace across the world and in our towns and neighborhoods. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O merciful God, we pray for all who are in need. Protect those who are fleeing from war. Shelter any who are in poverty. Soothe those who are grieving and heal the sick. Today we especially lift up the names of Ken, Pat, Doris, Dolores, Robin, Joyce, Shelley, Thomas, Pastor Sprout, and others we name silently or loud. Linda, Sue, Bernie. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, we pray for all who are suffering from excessive heat. Please provide relief. And for those in areas who are experiencing wildfires, provide protection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Give to children and youth who, who attend vacation Bible schools or summer camps experiences which plant and grow faith. Hear us, O God. The mercy is great. Anoint Crossover's new Haven Home of Hope, which will be opened to neighbors in our community this afternoon, well, this evening, uh, for all who are seeking help for mental illness or substance addictions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for the glorious music played in our worship by our, our organist, Cassie Gunn, as we celebrate her birthday today. And we pray that you will continue to bless her with a long and healthy life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give you thanks for Marie West and all your saints who now rest from their labors. Inspire us by their faith to treasure your kingdom. Give us trust that we will come to experience its fullness when we are gathered into heaven. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So now we got something special happening in our congregation's life. And I don't know if anybody's as nervous as I am, <laughs> but I'm very excited and joyful because I'm going to invite two of our young ones with the whole family to come up here and stand like in a half circle and you'll bring your um, sponsors, the godparents with you. We'll have them here. And anyone, just we'll try to make sure my microphone stays on for this. But if we have other little ones, if you want to come up here, just don't trip over the light cord there. Emma, you want to come? Anybody else? All right, if you want to see. We got room here. 
This is wonderful. We are going to have a baptism, a welcome into God's family. It's like an official sign that says, hey, you're included. Because God, who is rich in mercy and love, as we just heard today, gives us a new birth into a living hope through this sacrament ritual of baptism. And so by water, which I have here in this little jug there, you can see it, got water, and the Word of God, which we heard from the Bible today, do those two things. God delivers us from things like sin and death, and then raises us up to a new life, together with Jesus Christ, just like He was raised on Easter, right? And so we are united with all the baptized people in the body of Christ, in this church and all the churches around the world. As you will be anointed with the Holy Spirit, and then join us in the mission that, you know, I was telling us you about with the yeast thing, yeah, the mission that Jesus started to spread the kingdom of heaven, God's reign of love among us and far beyond. So called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, I'm going to ask your parents, first of all, whether they want to have you baptized. And if they do, they, I'm sure, will say, yes, I do. As you bring these children to receive the gift of baptism, you are, as parents, entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's people here at St. Paul's or other places, I suppose. But you're staying right. Bring them to the Word of God and to the Holy Supper of Communion to teach them, if they don't know already, the Lord's Prayer, yeah? but also the Creed and the Ten Commandments. And if you need some help with that, I'll be having confirmation classes at some time. Place in their hands the Holy Scriptures. Yes, we have Bibles back there. And I have some actually um, age-appropriate Bibles that we can get you. Nurture them in faith and prayer. That's something to do at home um, so that your children will learn to trust God, proclaim Christ to word and deed. Yes, you guys can do that too. Care for others and the world that God has made. Like when we take good care of the environment, you know, not throw our litter out the car window or stuff like that. And also work for justice and peace. So this microphone. Do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say I do. Now, this is the question for you two here. Called by the Holy Spirit. So God's Spirit calls you. Can you hear God's Spirit talking to you? As you trust that God loves you, do you want to be baptized? Can you say, I do? Awesome. That's wonderful. And then I have a question for the sponsors as well. Do you promise to nurture Olivia and Jackson in their Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Holy Spirit? and to help them live in that covenant of baptism in the communion of the church. If so, say, I do. And I'm asking the rest of our congregation, the Church of God represented here today, people of God, do you promise to support Olivia and Jackson and pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. So I ask you, therefore, to join together as we confess the faith of the church, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you also believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So, now I'm going to say a nice long prayer that I explained to Olivia and Jackson. This man there, 
Martin Luther wrote a long time ago as he gave thanks, not just for water that gives us life, it keeps us alive, especially when it's hot outside, but also all the ways that I've been learning together with them that God helped people in the Bible. Yeah. So, the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, O Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Do you think we have enough water in there yet? I think I'm going to pour it all out. Wow. God's love is abundant. So we want to show that. Well, I'm going to hand this to Emma. You can be my acolyte today. You get to be the assistant because here comes the easy part, but the special part. Who is first? So we're going to baptize both of you. Now, if you put your head close together, I can do both of you at the same time. Just step up real close. You want to come up on the step? Olivia and Jackson, you are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. So I got you really good well, huh? Guess what? I do have some napkins for you here. So you get the water back out of your face. I bet that feels nice and fresh though, huh? And you get to keep these. They're for you. Yeah, nice little souvenir. I'll take my book back because I need to see what comes next. We got some more stuff up here. First, I guess we pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you have given your daughters and sons, especially these two here, a new birth, that you cleansed them from sin and raised them to eternal life. Please sustain Olivia and Jackson with your Holy Spirit. Yeah, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the wisdom of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in God's presence, both now and forever. Amen. Well, here comes something. I don't know if you remember. I said I brought a little bit of oil with me. I'm going to just take a little dab and make the sign of the cross on your forehead to mark that you now belong to God, that you are a Christian, yeah? and that you're baptized. So Jackson, you are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Olivia, you are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're almost finished, actually. I got two more things here for you. Remember I told you, you get to keep these little candles there? Because Jesus said in the Bible, I am the light of the world. Then he told his followers, he said, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works, like your love, and together with us glorify our Father in heaven. And guess what? I'm going to give these candles for now to your baptismal sponsor so they have something to do as well. And let's hope that they don't drip any wax on our carpet. 
And then I'm going to take the two of you. Will you take my fingers? Come on up here. I want to stand here with me so I can introduce you to our congregation. Let us welcome these two new baptized members of God's family. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as fellow members of the body of Christ, children of the same Heavenly Father, and workers with us in the kingdom of God. Welcome. Yeah, we are baptized. Congratulations. See how excited everybody is for you? Huh? It's wonderful to know God's love for us. And thank you for letting us share that with you and with us too. So you get to go back to your seat. And then I have some certificates there that you get to take home, including for the sponsors. Yeah, you can extinguish those candles there. And the napkins, you got those. So we're all good. So I'd like to share with these two in person, but with all of you. The peace of Christ be with you always. You get to share that with someone near you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace, Olivia. Peace, Jaren. Jackson, peace of the Lord be with you. God's peace, everybody. And then Cassie, will you lead us in our special baptismal hymn? That's the tradition here at St. Paul's. I was there to hear your morning cry. Number 770.
God our Creator, Savior, and Encourager, you called everything into being. You called people to follow your Son, and you called us to witness to your love. We praise you for the love you have shown in your creation to the earth, plants, animals, and people. We thank you for your love that sent us your Son, Jesus, to save us from the bondage of sin and fear of death, and freed us to live with hope and joy. We worship you for your gracious acceptance, renewal and support, which continue to encourage us each and every day. But we have been invited to experience the gift of your love and to love each other as disciples of Jesus, who offers forgiveness of sin and eternal life to his followers. In a night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, your promise to preserve all the universe with its creatures and people, your gift of new life and freedom in your dominion, and your care shown to believers like Abram and Sarah, Moses and David, Mary and Peter, Paul and Martin, and disciples of Jesus from every time and place, we commit to trust you and serve your mission to bless the world. We ask bless us with your presence in this meal of bread and wine, and among all who share in the body and blood of your Son. Teach us to follow the example of Jesus in a life of praise to you and care toward all that you have made. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. As we are equipped with the Holy Spirit, let us then practice what we now pray for. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I want to make sure that all of you know, especially our guests, that every baptized and communing Christian is welcome to share with us in this meal of which Jesus is the host. It's not a Lutheran communion, it is the Lord's Supper. So please know that you're welcome. Anyone who would like to come and receive a blessing, keep your hands folded. And anyone who uh, prefers to take communion at their seat, simply let the ushers know. All people are called to God's table to come and eat what is good. The ushers will guide you forward, and I did forget to mention that the uh, light-colored beverage is uh, non-alcoholic grape juice, and then we also have gluten-free bread available on, upon request.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Please let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Please, Please experience God's kingdom on earth here at St. Paul's and then help us spread it through our activities in our congregation. 
a few highlights from this week's many announcements. There is a free operatic concert here at St. Paul's this afternoon, uh, 2 o'clock, uh, given by Thomas Taylor, a member of my wife's congregation. At 6 p.m. this evening, everyone is invited to an opening of the uh, crossover Haven of Home, ha Haven Home of Hope. Uh, that will be available for our neighbors in need, um, in need of mental health or addiction challenges. Um, I understand that once they begin the operation, it may be very difficult to visit. So if you want to have a good look, um, see the worship bulletin for the address. Next Sunday, August 6th, there will be no worship here at St. Paul's because we will all gather for our annual Old Settlers worship service with the community taking place at Beckemeyer School, 8 a.m. And our worship bulletin has some more details about maybe bringing lawn chairs if you prefer your own seating. There will be special needs parking real close to the worship service, so more in the bulletin. There's also a commu community choir, and you'll see the information about the practice on Thursday at United Methodist Church. Please sign up on our, worship, on our bulletin board in the hallway uh, to help us provide hospitality during Old Settlers. On Thursday, August 10th, um, we would like to make sure that people can come in and cool off if it's hot outside during the day, um, that we provide them with some cool water and let people use our restrooms. So it's nice if we have people here who can say welcome. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested, here's some information about our church. And finally, please note uh, other announcements, uh, several that are new, including um, a two-session brunch and dinner conversation with prayer uh, that I will be leading if there's enough interest. Um, so please RSVP by this Friday uh, to information in your bulletin. You can call, text, or email me um, so that I know how much to provide and get for food and if it's worthwhile for us to meet. But we'll be, uh, hopefully, talking uh, about the uh, future direction of our church. Um, secondly, bring a friend to worship on August 13th. It'll be our official bring a friend to worship service. And uh, we'll have ice cream afterwards. So who doesn't like ice cream? Just tell your friends. Would you want to come and join me at St. Paul's for an ice cream social? I'll meet you for worship or maybe I'll pick you up. And finally, there will be an outdoor worship service also from St. Paul's, but it will take place at the Old Lake, uh, August the 27th, so the last Sunday in August. More details about that are to come. There's more in your bulletin, so please take a good look. But now we will sing our sending hymn. We are marching, marching in the light of God. Number 650, it's another one of those requested favorite hymns this summer. Sorry, I cannot sit down for this one. So if you want to stand and dance in the aisle, we are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching. We are marching. Oh, we are marching. You, you'll be humming that at him all day long. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the I promise you. Oh, don't forget about the special collection so we can make sure um, after I put my two cents in there or whatever is on my money clip for Love from Gold Relief. Oh, my keys are stuck to it too, so we'll see. Maybe you'll get my whole house. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace.
please share the good news. Thanks be to God. Who's going to collect my money? 